If there's something I truly adore about Pizza Tower, other than P-ranking the levels, it's the manic pace of the game as Pepita blitzes through everything in its way, since you're basically as unstoppable as a train, splattering enemies like there's no tomorrow. So let's throw the satisfaction of doing just that out of the window and instead focus on killing as few enemies as possible. Unfortunately, pacifism wouldn't work here because... Yeah. To hopefully clear up any future confusion, the only thing I really care about in this video as far as whatever counts as a kill, is whatever counts towards your combo counter. It doesn't matter if I kill them, all that matters is that the enemy actually dies. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Now let's get cooking. I really don't think talking too much about specific levels will hold as much merit as my last Pizza Tower challenge where I deranked every level. The only real advice I have for John Gutter and most future levels in this challenge is to be careful during pizza time, because while there are no enemies you're forced to kill leading up to John, and there's something especially tricky to maneuver around at all, Gustavo can cause you issues. As you're escaping, he'll drop from the sky and direct you in the correct direction to get out and collect your toppings. However, as he or Mr. Stick falls from the sky, any enemies underneath them as they drop will instantly perish. And yes, this counts as a kill for you. Sometimes this is unavoidable, but most of the time, you can't avoid the deaths that can result from them helping you. Some levels, however, will be harder than others. Anyhow, John Gutter is one of the four levels, to my knowledge, that it's possible to play pacifist if you don't count the pillar John at the end of the stage, bringing our total of enemy kills to one. <laughs> Pete's Escape is the first level in the game where there are forced kills beyond John. They're all stupid rats, and they block your path until you don a transformation that allows you to blow them out of your way. Nothing can be done beyond getting the armor and rushing past them, unless I say one of the use debug mode, but that's lame. At least no regular enemies are forced to die yet, though I can't help but feel silly in how I have to spare them. She slimes crossing. Don't harm the pedestrians. This is so stupid. <laughs> but that's what I have to do to not kill them. In addition to John, there are four rats that stand in your way that you must eliminate. However, one of the toppings, the tomato, is also behind the rat. Technically, collecting these toppings locked behind enemies is optional, but you do need to collect at least 86 of them total. The reason why is simply that for each topping we take with us out of a level, we're rewarded $10. And those $10 per topping will add up to allow us to make our way up to the tower and challenge the five bosses keeping us from advancing further in the game. Because enemy deaths are saved after you successfully complete a level, and the game adds your total kills every time you do, you're given only one real chance to get all the toppings you think are necessary before moving on to the next level, with presumably only one chance to actually collect toppings per stage. That being said, I've done routing prior to starting this challenge, and I know we don't need the tomato, so I'm leaving it behind. There are five forced deaths as a result, and we're good to continue. <laughs> There isn't a lot to say about Ancient Chiefs as far as I'm really aware. There's a few areas where pinchers can be annoying, like on the cheese brace before pizza time, since if they see you, they don't stop running, and even will walk off at the bottomless pits like a green Koopa Troopa. You can, however, avoid having them knock themselves off by grabbing an enemy that actually does buy you their life like a cheese slime or a fork knight, and just poke which up off them until you can actually cross, as it's only Pepino who causes the bridge to shrink. When all is said and done though, there's five rats we have to explode on plus Pillar John. Something interesting to share though is that a lot of my viewers actually don't believe these rats or John should be counted as they act more as an element of the level rather than enemies. I can't say I quite understand, but fair enough, I can at least respect it. So starting from the next level, we will make the distinction between regular enemies and the level elements we just went over. Ah, now, this level is actually pretty annoying. Being a mostly vertical level, there is a lot to worry about if you want to minimize your kills here. Penters are once again more than ready to skinny dip into the lava littered all over this level, and the way their AI is geared means you have to babysit them a lot to keep your count low. The same amount of care has to be put towards approaching anchovies as a fair few of them when they charge at you will fall into the lava below them, and for these, I strongly recommend jumping at them and grabbing as you're making contact from atop. As far as the many pensers lower below in Bloodsauce Dungeon are concerned, you'll have to herd them strategically, much like sheep. 
a try and a true strategy is just to take a hit of damage if a herd of pensions are facing you, so your after hit invincibility will protect you from any other hazards as you scoop them up with a quick slide. Once you re-enter where the level is dark, be aware that Gustavo will leap down and stop in two different rooms. The first one, I recommend scaling the wall on the right and waiting about 5 seconds from where you enter the room so the fork bag can actually pass by. For the second one, you just need to make sure you don't break the first block you see on your way down, and after that you're basically set. The rest of the level isn't too bad barring any sudden surprises, though you're hit with an extra 9 force kills. Ouch. And 8 of those are regular enemies. You're probably wondering now how bosses will be dealt with in this challenge, as they must be defeated in battle for us to continue. Yeah, so we have no choice but to beat them up to advance. Fortunately, any enemies you fight during bosses don't add to your total kill count, so these boss battles are more for filler than anything else. Of course, just because we can't show the boss's kindness, doesn't mean we can't show anyone kindness, so here for all future fights, I do her P-Ranks because why not? At least Pepino gets out unharmed. <laughs> There are 5 rats on the farm, and we need more to peck them away. Barring those, there is also a potato farmer we see in the second to last room during pizza time that we simply cannot protect from Gustavo as he flies down and knocks them out. Even if we were to try and super jump and dive to its location, we can't even get it from under the ceiling before Gustavo appears so there is simply nothing we can do. I guess he really wanted some french fries to go along with his pizza. An additional 7 lives have been harvested by us. As you likely noticed, I'm not doing all the levels in order this time around. I want to show all the attempts as they were successful and optimized in the order I accomplished them. And Waste Yard is coming at the fun farm because I find this to be a rather annoying level in general, as chicken bonitos can actually kill other enemies with the candles through friendly fire. At least it's mercifully short. You'll want to make sure enemies can't interact with each other whenever possible. Also, be careful when the chickens jump because that often can lead to you accidentally killing them. That being said, despite being forced to transform into a ghost, the way forward isn't blocked with rats, but she's greatest which feel no pain. Moreover, the only entity to die here is Pillar John, so now you know 2 out of 4 levels, which can be played pacifist. You're probably also wondering where Oregano Desert is? Yeah, we'll get to that. There are only 3 required kills, and most of them involve traveling down this chute in a similar vein to Bloodsauce Dungeon. Otherwise, there is only one room where there's a rat in our way, be the last obstacle before Pillar John. Beyond that, rooms where there would be rats in our way, where we need to rocket are now non-sentient asteroids. A lot of the challenge in this level comes down to verticality. Though to be honest, I don't show it very well on this footage, as I end up clearing this level on my first attempt. Still, don't be reckless like me, and body step through cracks in the ground, or you may end up killing it all by accident. Instead, break the floor by aiming for the space between where the floor breaks and the solid ground. Even if that isn't necessary here, you'll also remember this tactic for much, much later. This leaves us with 5 kills, but 2 of them are regular enemies. As much as I love Fast Food Saloon, this level absolutely sucks! For this challenge. First off, the first room has a chicken bandito. If you prompt it to run to the right, odds are likely that it'll kill a rant shooter and void your attempt. So wick it up from the right side, and then run to the next room as fast as you can. Ideally, without moving any other enemies. What sucks here is the first room is rather long, and every second you spend here just gives the chicken bandito more time to kill something on your behalf. And trust you me, chicken banditos will be the bane of your day here. Not only are they fast runners that you can't even get close to without running at Mach 3 or even 4, if the stretch of land is short enough, but they can often end up in places where they get crushed when all you want to do is move forward. For that reason, you have to herd them. Run, run, run as fast as you can, and slide into the chickens down the chute, then move backwards so you touch the ground and push them past the switch block. Past that room, there's a rat leading to the cheese topping, but you can skip the right by crawling from above onto the cheese bridge, and while crawling, moving right into where the top of it is being held to snag it without adding to your kills. As far as other problematic toppings go, the sausage is likely the most difficult to actually get in the entire freaking game. To optimally get the one here, you need to kill only one rat, not two. You must kill the rat on the bottom, start the race, then as soon as you can, 
super jump, and dive through the exit and reach the goal. If you fail to get through in time, you'll still be able to finish the level with minimum kills, but then you won't be allowed to miss any more optional toppings in the future. And you can't ignore both threats because... Yeah. I do know that it is possible to kill the rats using the Chicken Bandito's candles, but banking on that isn't a safe call when you'd also have to hurt other rats which would be an act of danger. During pizza time in this very same room where you found the sausage topping, you'll want to take your time and let the Chicken Bandito come to you, then place it where it will move off screen. Enemies that wander off like this don't die unlike the bottomless pits, so it's a decent option to avoid the risk of the friendly fire. From there, just wait for the rats to approach you so Gustavo doesn't ruin all of your hard work. As for the level's treasure, try to avoid sliding too much. But if you do, avoid piling up too many enemies with sliding, or you'll have guided them into Gustavo's path and you'll kill whatever Pepita brought towards him. Actually, making sure you take the high road as soon as possible will help in avoiding waking chickens up, and you can more calmly make your way to the secret treasure. Heading back down, as long as you spawn Gustavo while his spawn point is devoid of enemies, you're as good as golden by sliding. But then there's the final room where all I can really say is, good luck. Because here, a lot more than just one chicken bandito was spawned, and it makes avoiding at least one rush shooter getting killed through friendly fire downright sadistic. What makes this room so horrible is there's only one direction you can wake the chickens from, and odds are likely at least one red shooter will get hit by a wayward candle. And remember when I said this was a rather long room? Well, this becomes especially true here, even more so with how many more enemies are spawned as you make your way out. I'm lucky to come out of this with only two extra kills. Imagine with no additional casualties. My advice is to group any stray ranch shooters behind cover so they're safe from friendly fire. Past this, you'll want to personally take the Chicken Mandita with you as you try to reach the end of the corridor. It's here that Pepito's jump property to not instantly kill enemies is especially useful, as it allows you to maintain your stealth. I really am glad this game lets you do that without killing anything. I'd also recommend reloading the room through the teleport box that leaves a lap 2 so that no candles hit any ranch shooters, just as you end the level and lock in your progress. In addition to John, there's only 4 forced kills, plus the Jerome door, which leaves an additional route to be knocked out of the way, adding an extra 6 to our total. If this all sounds like a lot of effort to clear just a single level for this challenge, it's because it is. If I could skip this level, I would. Not just because it's difficult, heck, I can think of at least two levels harder than this one later on, but just a massive number of forced kills here. On top of Jean, there is a buttload of rats we're required to kill. In fact, there are more forced rats that sit in our way in this level than any other level in the game. You're looking at a grand total of 29 forced kills in this level, with it being, I'd say, 25 rats, and a sad three other enemies as you trip on the water slide. And it's mighty obnoxious to try to avoid extra kills here, especially during pizza time, where while the level wants you in a barrel, you have to shove the pinnacles out of the way, lest they get blown to high heaven by the cannonballs that are everywhere here. Yeah, not a fun vacation. A tip I can give you during pizza time is to be careful surrounding the explosives in the last barrel room. There's a depression in the floor with a barrel inside that you want to carry a pinnacle pass to break Pepino out of the barrel later, so that you can knock the rat out of the way and then carry the remaining pinnacles out of the way of the cannonballs that rain down on them. However, even once they're out of the way, you still have to be aware of their habits to walk back and forth so that they don't end up at the wrong spot and get blown up anyway because you get too close to them, or even directly above them. It truly does feel like war sometimes, with just how many enemies are blowing up when all I want is peace. Fortunately, you can make this quite easy in yourself by just not breaking the crates so the pinnacles don't wander off and get blown to smithereens. Beyond that, there isn't much left to be said. 29 extra kills, but only 3 of them aren't rats or John. Okay, so there's only one top in here to collect, and it's the mushroom. But before you see it, you have to pass the first three greaseball holes. Be aware that with the exception of the burgers, if enemies make contact with the ball, they are defeated instantly. Yes, even the golf demons when they're in their raging form. So you're going to want to herd them out of the greaseball as fast whenever possible. 
From there, just reach the pillar John block as soon as you can. Once you get here, however, things take a problematic turn. You see, in addition to the usual enemy hurting, you need the Grease Ball in position to be hit by the burger so that John is hit, but the Grease Ball doesn't hit the goal adding to your combo meter. This involves camping at the exit and watching for the Grease Ball icon on the right side of the screen to know both when the burger reaches the Grease Ball and when said Grease Ball is in motion so you know when to bail without either being too early where you'd have to redo the whole room or too late where your combo is increased by two and you're forced to redo the entire level. Yes, you did in fact hear that right. This is called Golf Skip, and it's a technique speedrunners use to skip the whole Pizza Time exclusive section of the level. And for this challenge, it allows us to skip three Grease Ball kills and the whopping five rats, which is quite a lot. All the other toppings also force kills, but the Pineapple Force is by far the most if you don't skip it. Then all you really have to do is avoid killing any more enemies as you head back through Pizza Time. One more rat is required to be killed for the sake of getting the secret treasure, but before that, there's an obstacle I really want to talk about. During pizza time, many enemies are spawned, which you will need to hurt out of the way. This much I think is already obvious to you. And most of this is the usual affair. But near the Jerome door, there's a rat in your path you need to be in ball form to clear out. You don't want to get too close though, as if you do, a burger is spawned, which will be much more difficult to avoid, as the patrol is back and forth waiting to be killed. My suggestion is to open the way forward with the enemy not having spawned yet, bowl the right out of the way, and jump over the burger as it spawns while rolling at full speed. If successful, you should miss both burgers here and can safely move them out of the way, thus making their treasure much more manageable to collect. With three grease balls, John, and three bowling rats, that's a total of seven required kills. Though since grease balls are an element of the level design, I won't be counting them towards the fair total. Another level that forces only one kill on us, and a third of four overall. But instead of Pepino, we're forced to use the duo of Gustavo and Brave Formosa the level. This brings along its own complications, the most notable being the fact that just jumping at enemies is enough to kill now. Beyond that, there's two real pain points. The first I want to talk about involves the pension that's found while getting the sausage topping when in a room that's full of bottomless pits. You'll need to make sure your way is clear so no enemies are killed as you run, and you need to scare the pincer so it doesn't run after you. Since Gustavo can't grab, your options are rather limited. You can try to stun it by hitting the ground, pounding the ground with brick or scaring it with a mock run as you approach it, but neither option is very reliable. Secondly, there's this part about halfway through where you're forced to crawl and basically take a leap of faith as the camera doesn't show you the ground, or you may just randomly land on an archer, adding an unnecessary depth to your toll. This is the only part of the challenge where it honestly feels like luck as you can't see what's beneath you and without brick, you can't even slow your descent through wall jumping. All you can do is pray that you're not at the wrong place at the wrong time so you can keep going with a clean conscience. Though if you're fast enough, this really should never be a problem. Of course, I doubt most would be willing to go fast in a challenge like this, but sometimes you just have to know your moment to go for it. Be aware of a part in pizza time as well that can also see Mr. Six stomp on enemies while you're trying to make your way through. He spawns on the far left, so as long as you wait for the enemies to walk past, you should honestly be fine. Besides that, you at least still have your bot run to sun enemies for a bit. It's not much, but it can't help out. Wait, why is the game saying Fluttershy got hurt? I'm not playing with the MLP mod. Guess I should make a note of this in the video, but I guess while checking out other mods, the text never was actually reverted when I turned away from it, so you may see Pinkie Pie be hurt instead of Pepino. Well anyways, in a challenge as stressful as this, trust me, you'll need all the help you can get. With only John being a forced victim, we're good to continue, and there is also our third level of only one real forced kill. The funny thing is I don't need the pineapple anyway, because I got the, the sausage from Fast Food Saloon, so we can't avoid one more topping. Wait, what? I forgot the trap. Is what I would love to say, if not for the fact that I forgot the treasure in that level. I remember Jerome, but forgot to take him to the door, meaning I'd have to do the whole level again. Though at this point, the damage has already been done, and the game auto saves after every level, so I'd have to redo the entire game in order to truly keep my enemy deaths at a minimum.
Is this what it's like to be gnomed? If so, I have but one request. Tell them I hate them. That all being said, the reality is it's very easy to edit a save file if you know where to look, so I erased the progress of that attempt manually and did it again. Since this was one of the hardest levels so far, you can imagine I was not too happy about this. On the bright side, it was that my original successful attempt was perfect. I actually failed to get the pineapple topping in time as the pizza got cold before I could deliver it. It isn't necessary as you already got the sausage out of fast food saloon which was otherwise serving as a buffer, but that's no longer the case. And besides, it was only like two more attempts after I ended up making that blunder, so who really cares? I sure as heck don't. Or at least I shouldn't, but I do, Mama and it makes know. you want to scream. Yeah. Haters gonna hate, but I always love the Peppy Bot Factory. It's one of the easiest levels we have to clear, but that alone doesn't tell you the whole story. No toppings are stuck behind enemies, nor are there any enemies that are difficult to avoid, but there are a lot of four steps thanks to the transformation and the many, many rats that are forced in your way. This is actually the second worst level in the challenge when factoring in forced enemy deaths in addition to John. We're forced to exterminate a whopping 17 rats, add 18 to the total. <laughs> This level took me longer than I'd like to admit, since I don't even really consider it too hard. Pepino's half is easy enough, but we're once again tasked with cassava and break, and there's no shortage of shrimp thugs and pizza slaws trying to get in our way. Doesn't help either that it seems like now, just having enemies touch my feet is enough to get them killed, even when I'm standing perfectly still. How? I was not even in the air. Oh my god, stay away from my feet! Stay away from my feet! Shockwave hitboxes really are a pain sometimes, and only for me. In addition to John, we must also kill three handcuffs en route to the pineapple topping. I'd skip these entirely, but unfortunately that's not a choice we're given since Rome is also here. You lucky, lucky girl. And yes, my toppings are all girls. Pizza tower bots are fun. It goes without saying, by the way, but if a peanut gets caught by a handcuff, that's an instant reset, since the only way to escape them is to basically kill them. This, of course, forces us to be more crappy in how we maneuver around them, but those snatch break just from getting near, so for all intents and purposes, the cops in Pizza Tower are in fact crooked. One of the shrimp is also impossible to save, as there's an electric floor on the left of it, and it'll never stop pursuing us after we get too close. And good luck passing it on the way back. Also be mindful of Mr. Sick because he pretty much always lands in spots where enemies can be if you're not preemptive. An additional 5 deaths with only one being John. Oh crap! So, I have a funny bit of information to give regarding Oh Shoot. The D Ranks Only Challenge I did a while ago actually has some inaccurate information regarding this level. It turns out that you actually can skip the first priest, thanks to the spit cheese enemies above the big bad one that launches you through two rats. By grabbing an enemy from below and pulling them under like a kappa, no, not that kind of kappa, or like the one from that episode of Code Name Kids Next Door with the pool, it allows you to avoid killing an extra rat by canceling Pepino's transformation early through some extra damage. There's also a later room where there are 5 forced kills as you're once again guided by a ball of sticky cheese. It's worth noting that holding the jump button allows Pepino to gain more loft as it makes contact with an enemy to kill it, but for whatever reason, this is only true here for the last one where it's already too late. However, you can skip the second to last rat with a very precise jump from the wall to the other side, without either touching the rat or the water below, allowing you to break past the last rat to leave the section. And trust me, I do mean precise. Then after Pillar John, you have two more rats that are forced on you to kill. As far as the John block you can switch on and off before the next forest rat, you just have to flip the switch, then gather the monkeys and kick them to the right so they won't be in your way when you barrel back down to leave the room. How fortunate that unlike the chicken banditos, there's no friendly fire here. Soon after you can collect the treasure, but don't immediately rush for the Jerome door or you'll find yourself trapped without being able to spare the monkey in your way. Break the brake, keeping the monkey near the exit pipe, and then wait for a while after it wanders off the left side of the screen so you can employ the tactic of hard breaking through press and grab and pushing in the opposite direction of where Papino is running allowing you to immediately stop and change course before you create a second Harambe. There is also a hall of 5 spit cheeses you can't just get by by sliding as Pepino won't slide in time before killing the front most enemy. What you need to do here is taunt as soon as you exit the pipe, 
as long as you're not too late where you may accidentally parry the spit she is attacking you, you'll either take damage because you were too early, or just parry the attack and somehow still not kill anything. Now, everything up to now is decently challenging as is, but the last obstacle is just... absolutely disgusting. Near the end of pizza time, these ninja slices will spawn. If you approach them, they'll move backwards into the water and die. So you have to be careful in timing your approach by dash grabbing as they attempt seppuku. What makes this part particularly complicated, however, is that you also have to put up with a spit cheese attacking you, and it makes grabbing the first ninja slice a matter of timing. Yes, I said first. Too early, and you'll grab the spit cheese and lose the ninja slice to the water. Even if you succeed with saving the first ninja slice, though, you can't relax yet. You then need to immediately jump over the rushing water and weave in and out so Gustavo falls down so he doesn't kill the enemy you're trying to protect. If you don't go far enough in before heading back, you'll either be forced to land with Gustavo killing the enemy, or you'll hit the water, which will lead to you sliding into the Ninja Slice taking it out. Going too far also just means the Ninja Slice will die to Gustavo, so be careful. Keep in mind, this is only assuming you even get that far, or you're even able to get your inputs out correctly like you intend to. And Oh Shoot is a very long level, so as you can imagine, Failing here and having to redo the entire dang thing just gets a tad bit frustrating. The gymnastics this level forces you to master just gets downright absurd. Everything else should be fairly obvious. Oh god, I'm coming down! In spite of that quite terrifying fake out, we're able to make like a bar of soap and give all but 11 enemies to slip. Six being Raps and one being John. <laughs> Something I noticed while P-Raking this level is enemies are rather scarce before reaching the Satan Destroys Pizza Slice. And sure enough, there's nothing to really talk about before then aside from just avoiding accidentally opening the way for someone to slide into the nether. After Pepito unlocks the screw attack, however, you must be extra careful. Any enemy you touch will turn into vapor, so you have to fly around them, and like other levels, you can't buck them out of your way either, which does in fact have some enemies be impossible to dodge. But the room where Pizza Time starts is by far the worst defender, as you simply cannot get out of the room in time before the enemies die. You can't even come close. A fact that's bad for this challenge, but good for my sanity. Let's also be thankful that the fact that spawn enemies don't count towards your combo counter means that fake Santa can't ruin your run by spawning snowmen that count as being killed. This, John, and the seven dwarf unsavable snowmen all lead to a total of nine unstoppable enemy deaths. But funny enough, only John counts as a level element. Wait, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Despite its difficulty when playing normally, it's surprisingly mild as far as required enemy kills. There's two bowling rats, plus three more when trying to reach the secret treasure you need your own for, and that's it. What's nice about here is that the ghosts can't be killed without an exorcist, so by ignoring them, a lot of the enemies can't be killed at all, which really shows itself to be a blessing. Thank you, Pizza Scare. <laughs> Told you we'd talk about this level eventually. Most of World 2 is pretty tame as far as forced kills are concerned, though a regular desert does demand a fair bit of spilled blood with four four steps. Before Pizza Time, there are two rats you're forced to blast through while your mouth is ablaze. There's also this one tribal cheese near the beginning of the level that, to my knowledge, was unable to be skipped. Even going at Mach 4 and diving as soon as possible to try and save it from the wrath of Gustavo, Papino just narrowly cannot save it in time. We're unfortunately coming out of the desert having claimed four more lives, one of them being this poor tribal cheese. Is what I would say if I couldn't spread this tribal cheese, but as luck would turn out, it's actually entirely possible to save it! So here's the break. The enemy is on this narrow, inverted, Y-shaped slab of stone where Gustavo will swoop down to stop it into paste. If we arrive as soon as possible to try and shove the enemy out of the way, it will be too late, as the tribal cheese is approaching us and it won't be pushed far enough out of the way in time. Because for as fast as Pepito can run, enemies travel surprisingly slowly despite having a chunky meatbag rushing at them at Mach 4. What you need to do to avoid the enemy becoming collateral damage is taunt. Several times. Taunting is a tool this game gives you that lets you preserve your momentum while running, 
and still be able to slow down in real time, giving this tribal cheese a chance to not only move the opposite direction of us, but actually reach the very farthest left side of the platform it's stranded on so that when we dive towards it, we're able to just barely push it out of the way. This is actually a technique I learned from Barely Al at Pizza Tower Challenge, where he played through every level of pizza base chasing for all of lap 2. Unfortunately, when I did realize this was possible to do, I had already long since saved with this tribal cheese having already bitten the dust, since I figured it wasn't possible to save. And I was even already in the final world of the game, with only the final three levels being the only levels left to complete. Yeah, I hate this level. <laughs> It's probably going to raise some eyebrows for you that are talking about war already, but trust me, this level is in fact easier than Don't Make a Sound. Significantly easier, in fact. But don't be fooled, war isn't exactly a trip to Chuck E. Cheese's either. You don't have to worry about Gustavo too much here, as he actually adds to force kills when he fires projectile breaks at enemies here. Not all of his contributions are forced, however. The first and second are unavoidable, don't worry about those. But the third and the last room before you enter the lab can be avoided by simply jumping over him with enough speed and diving to not kill the pizza soldier in your path, while the fourth, and first time you see Gustavo in the lab, can actually see Breaky redirected to instead target a Pepino clone that won't add to your combo meter if you lure them close enough, as opposed to the Kentucky Bomber that will. Don't worry about the fifth, you should never actually trigger him in the final room. There is also a number of rats you're forced to blow through to proceed. What makes war quite a bit more difficult than other levels, though, is the shotgun you're forced to equip, as it has a large range, meaning you need to be careful how you space yourself between other enemies so you don't accidentally bust a cap in them. The existence of mines also can cause issues, as they hurt both Papino and the various other enemies within range after they're set off. War truly takes no prisoners, reminds me of Crest Cove. However, only Pepino can set them off, so don't worry about bumping enemies on the mines you have activated. There is also this one point in the level where you enter a room and an enemy just... combusts? I don't know what died or how it did, but it counts as a kill for me. Unfortunately, there is nothing I can do to prevent it. Overall, you have three rats you need to exterminate via friendly fire, three rats exterminated by Pepino flying into them with a rocket, two enemies that Gustavo will kill once you draw close enough to him, and... I have no idea what else, but it adds up to a total of 9 enemy deaths in war. So you're probably wondering, can Don't Make a Sound truly be that bad? The enemies here can't even hurt you, and instead just tend to bump and stun for a second. But even that can't be too big of a deal when there's simply no way to dodge all the top end monsters. And we're given a shotgun because clearly they're too tall to maneuver around, or even just too fast. Not to mention how cramped some rooms are, and how many clone battles tend to get in your way. It's unfortunate how many kills are forced on us, but it makes my job a lot easier. Right? As luck would have it, this is the fourth and final level which is possible to play pacifist besides John. And it's sad, because top and monsters do count towards increasing your combo counter, as well as the final count at the end of the game, but don't actually give out any points, much like enemies that are rejected by spawners. As far as I'm aware, they're the only enemies with this property, which really just adds more salt to an already burning wound. Before pizza time, they aren't really a big deal. After all, there's no incentive to avoid getting jump scared beyond just hitting the action, which, I mean, I do, but I'm willing to put up with them for the sake of collecting top and center off the beaten path. It isn't like I'll be able to avoid all the patroller enemies on the way anyway. The difficulty of Don't Make a Sound, however, goes up massively during pizza time. Not just because you still have to avoid killing enemies as you race back to start, but aside from war, this is the only real level where it feels like your time limit is actually significant so you don't have the luxury to take your time anymore. Which is just amazingly dreadful because this level really feels like it just spams on you with enemies. After blasting through Pillar John, you need to maneuver around the Clonmados that have now spawned, the Pineapple Top and Monster that now spawns the Air One Piranapals, that will always be pursuing you by the way, and you now have to also dodge all four Top and Monsters before you can advance to the next room. To succeed, you need to ready a super jump on the slope, and just before the Mushroom Top and runs off the ledge, Spring Jump and Shoulder Bash to the right over it immediately diving to avoid the tomato topping monster 
who will be lagging behind with its lower speed. Then, you need to blow up the crates under your feet and escape. There are tons of ways you can screw this up though. If you're too early to jump, you won't be able to clear the mushroom and you'll get caught. If you're too late, you either will hit the ceiling or the monster will get too close and you'll be unable to make the jump. There is also the possibility that even if you do everything right, you'll still get caught by the sausage. Why? I don't freaking know. But when you're trapped in a nightmare, since when does anything ever have to make any sense? And even if you do pass three of the four, the tomato will catch you if you're not moving fast enough while you're sliding. The name of the game is Hustle, and you really need to if you want to make it out of the later obstacles alive. The next room, you need to outmaneuver another tomato monster flying at you. Not as hard as the last room, just try to circle around him. Of course, doing that while the clown tomatoes are cluttering the area makes it easier said than done. They don't hurt you, but the fact they can bump into you and saw your momentum makes navigating around them super awkward. And that's only if they don't randomly combust too. Or fall down the pit that leads to the next part of the level if you're up on the way forward but get jump skinned before you can make like a banana and split. So you better be ready to commit. The third room has another tomato top and monster, but that isn't your only problem now. Here, it's the patrollers that are stationed around electrical hazards. Remember, if you knock them down into the hazards, it counts as a kill and you need to reset, meaning not only are you not allowed to run, but the tomato monster will wake up early, even if the pineapple monster hasn't had a chance to wake it up yet. This room also is similarly annoying like the previous one thanks to Clown Mados, but at least you can attempt to just book it for the door once you're past the electricity. After all of that, the last real obstacle in your way is the first top of the monster. The two before it aren't hard as you're easily able to outrun them, but you'll need more than sheer speed for the finale. It's easy to run away, but it's not nearly as easy to jump over this hurdle, especially when you're being distracted by pineapples. They add a lot of difficulty here since you need the time to set up a super jump, but they'll chase you down and interrupt your animation leaving you wide open to the mushroom top and monster. And you can't try making the jump with both of them swarming you. It's just not realistic. But I've come way too far to give up now. If you can consider it's too much for someone to do, remember everything we've cleared up to now. And don't think for a moment that I'll let anything get in my way. Because if you give me that moment, I win. Get So let's break down the game plan for this part. What you want to do is drag the patroller by the gate to the spot where the floor is lower. It will call the monster towards you later, but you'll then want to let yourself be jump scared here. This will reset the piranha pulse, or at least it did in practice but not anymore, I really can't explain this. But the patroller at least always remains where it last sits. You then want to spawn the first one, backtrack to the beginning of the room, take damage, and haul your butt over to the patroller, where you then taunt so it actually calls the monster towards you, then within the brief period of time you have where there are no enemies on your tail, super jump over the monster and run for the left side. Finally, after you pass that final obstacle, you're free to walk to the entrance provided that you had enough time left and you can say goodbye to don't make a sound, having only one kill under your belt. With one last smackdown against Pizza Face and his cronies, we're set to start the final level. There are naturally a few rats we must extinguish in addition to the final pillar, John. But once we reach the end of the level, we do resurrect John, so I think we could take off 19 deaths doing that alone, right? Minus one death for each time we broke him in a level because here he's alive again. There's also a stray pinnacle and grease ball we must eliminate. There are a few spots that can't catch you off guard like the first ramp where you can just dash grab over to avoid leaping into an enemy, as well as the cows after the golf part of this trek down, not to mention the occasional mines you need to be wary of. But past those, you're not going to be given a lot of trouble here. Though 7 kills with only one being a regular enemy is rather hefty. Either way, with this final level behind us now, we have now beaten Pizza Tower with the minimum number of kills possible. 
and I'd like to thank MB Switchy for being a channel member, particularly for being my one and only $10 pledge. In addition to all my other channel members, thank you ever so much for your generosity. So what actually is that minimum enemy kills number? 146. And of all of those enemies who saw their lives cut short, 112 of them were John, a stupid rat, or Greaseballs. Meaning if we were to discard all of those, we have only 34 regular enemies we were forced to kill. And of those 112 unavoidable kills, 19 were John, while only 4 were Greaseballs. Meaning we killed a total of a whopping... 89 rats. That's more than half of the total kills for the entire game. And before any of you ask, because I have a feeling that at least some of you will want me to try doing this challenge of resurrecting John, I'll just be the first to say I'm not doing it. But the total number of kills, if you're not going for the true ending, is 113. You're probably also wondering how many of those kills have to do with grease balls, John, or rats. First off, two things. After this video, if you want to support my channel, please watch more of my videos to the very end. If all you care about is Pizza Tower, I made a D-Ranks only challenge about a couple of months ago. But if you want to see more of me, just click this playlist on the screen right now. Now, on the note of how many of those kills in any percent would be either John, Greaseballs, or Rats, I don't know.